What up, friendos? Welcome back. I have to say, it's a bit of a shame that I have to make this video, because obviously Helldivers 2 is incredibly well received for the game that it is, and it's uh, live service done well. It doesn't have your eyes out with microtransactions. Uh, it's fun. It's not just designed to basically keep you playing as long as possible with terrible mechanics or just chasing a carrot for the sake of chasing a carrot. It's actually a good game that people obviously clearly enjoy, and that's why the outrage has been what it has. And if you've not been following along, I'm going to try and fill you in on all the details. But I know a lot of people have been following this. A lot of people have made videos about it. And why did I wait so long as usual? Um, because I wanted to see what happened instead of just doing piecemeal video updates on, on what's been going on. So if you don't know, basically Helldivers 2, it's on Steam. It's by an independent game development studio called Arrowhead, but they are published. The game is published and the IP of Helldivers is owned by Sony. Now, obviously, when they got brought on, you know, to, to make Helldivers, they've signed over all the rights basically towards what happens with the game um, to Sony because it's Sony's IP and presumably they've funded it in, in some way. So they get to develop the game based on Sony's IP. Sony gets to publish it. And that's why it's on PlayStation and obviously it's on Steam. It's been a big success. The game, as you can see from the player history, the player numbers, has been crazy well received. Obviously it's on the downtrend because all games downtrend uh, pretty much. It's it's a rule of gaming. But it's been holding steady with over 100,000 concurrent players most evenings. Now what happened was they've just, as of a couple days ago, I think two days exactly, put out an update saying you will, based on this date, be required to link a PlayStation Network account to your Helldivers Steam purchase to be able to log on and play the game. Now, obviously, this has enraged a lot of people and uh, made people, I'm going to say, rightly upset because this essentially means if you've been playing the game for the last couple months since it came out and you don't want to make a PSN account, you have had your your account bricked basically you you can no longer play the game you've been playing for months and that you paid for there's some narratives there's some counter opinions i guess towards this which i'm going to address in this video that i don't think is really ad addressing what people are saying they're just kind of straw manning what people's opinions are typically it comes from uh sony fanboys strangely but we'll get to that the thing that people are bringing up quite a lot is that when you bought the game on steam it does say you need, it's a requirement of a, of a PlayStation Network account to be able to play the game, which is nothing new, right? If you buy almost any game on PC nowadays that's from a big publisher, you don't just launch the game on Steam and then you're in the game playing. You have to launch the game on Steam, which opens a third-party application like Ubisoft's Uplay, Rockstar's, whatever the fuck it's called, uh, EA's, whatever it's called now. It's on like the third iteration they basically all have one and obviously with sony what they're trying to do is get as many people as they can on psn to pump up those numbers for investor reasons or whatever so they can pat themselves on the back and say oh look how many users we've got even though these people are probably never engaging with anything sony related other than the sony games they're playing on pc so obviously this has come top down from sony arrowhead have had no say in this but at the launch of the game, you should have been signing into a PSN account. It didn't work, so they just turned it off. Now, obviously, people are saying, why are you upset if you always knew? I'm just going to tell you, most people don't read the stuff on their screen when they're launching a game or buying a game on Steam. They don't sit and read the EULA or the Terms of Service. They simply see a button that says skip or continue. They go past that screen, and if it lets them play the game for three months... Obviously, it wasn't a requirement, right? It, it was something that was going to be, but no longer is. Bringing it in after multiple months and saying, yeah, if you don't sign into this, your game's just fucking gone. We've just took your money, had your eyes out, and you don't get to play anymore. That's fucked up. That's the problem, not the fact that it would have been a requirement at the start. If it was at the start, people could have just immediately refunded if they didn't want to have a PSN account, but taking things away from people 
is always going to be the problem. It's it's always the case. If you give people more stuff, people like that. If something's baseline, if it's there when you get into it, that's okay. But if you take things away from people, that's never going to be okay. So I have a bunch of stuff bookmarked here that I'll go through. One of the biggest issues is obviously there's a lot of countries you you simply cannot have a PSN account uh, if you if you wanted one. Even if you wanted to do this, if you wanted to sign up for this, there's a lot of places that, that can't. This is a list of countries right here that, that can't make a PSN account. There's some people saying just fake where you live, just put down wherever and then continue playing the game. And my argument's always going to be one, then if Sony finds out they can ban you, again, bricking your, your copy of the game you bought legitimately that allowed you to buy without telling you you needed a PSN account and couldn't fucking make one, which is the most ridiculous thing in the world, by the way. Selling somebody a product they can't use unless they lie is, I'm fairly sure that's got to be against some form of law in most countries that somebody sells you a product you, you can't use unless you lie about where you're from. Obviously, the argument to this is some people say, no, oh, how many people even play in these in these countries? Why do you care? You don't live there. And that's like saying, you know, just just because it doesn't impact me directly, let's just let people do whatever the fuck they want to other people, which obviously is not a not a real way to live as a consumer when it's over a video game. This was another big problem. Uh, Sony's website, it's not only shady Russian developers, cough, cough, escape from Tarkov, they get caught changing their their text on their website when people call them out on things so this was originally what it said uh, in the faq on sony about playstation games on pc do i have to sign into psn to play a playstation game on pc signing into psn is optional when playing a playstation game on pc then they changed it some playstation games may require you to sign in and link to an account uh, for psn so obviously one of those is much different than the other ones. Some may require uh, versus no, you, you don't have to do it. Then obviously we get to the uh, community handling of this from Arrowhead, which I'm just going to say is a problem. You should obviously not be doing this, but I do understand in a way and I will give them a little bit of sympathy. So originally people were saying, you know, oh, you know, this is going to kill Steam, uh, kill Helldivers, turn Team, backpedal, lose your player base. Um, and then the community manager is responding, I thought you were refunding and leaving. Now, I don't even disagree with the sentiment of what this community manager has said. I'd say the same thing. If somebody said, oh, I'm not going to watch your videos anymore, and then they continued leaving comments, I'd say, the fuck are you doing here? You know, I thought you said you were not going to watch. You know, fuck off, basically. But as a community manager, this is just a bad luck. You, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, and then this is another response from Spitz. And again, I don't want to direct any hate or you know weird stuff to these people because this was forced upon them by sony they did know about it again we'll go over that in a minute because the ceo of arrowhead has replied to this repeatedly but at the same time uh, even if people have been atting you and sending you abuse and things like that there's a way to handle things and then there's a way not to and this is the way not to they respond it's not like this is the first or even the 14th mainstream game to require a third party account that takes a couple of minutes to create not the problem again this is what people keep repeating but this is not the problem but if it's a deal breaker to have to take 120 seconds out of your day to enter an email and password and then forget about it change your steam review and make your displeasure known on a platform where it matters half of this i completely agree with yes change change your review change it to a negative uh and refund the game which we know now is an option we'll get to that in a second but obviously uh, this comes across as as dismissive of the issue right and Again, I understand the frustration of having all this hate and stuff like that. And I know people will have been irrational about him. People will have been sending death threats and being absolute fucking cretin losers because they always are about pretty much anything online, especially when it comes to video games. Most gamers are just piss babies, to be honest. But this is not the way to handle it, is it? Dismissing people's uh, actual legitimate concerns, which your CEO has also echoed and said that they feel like this is a problem uh, this is not the way to go. So this is another one. Uh, first of all, it's Sony's de decision, not ours. Secondly, we don't have all the details about region-related issues yet. We're chasing Sony to get more info. This is, it just screams that, you know, Sony have come in and said, oh my God, look at all this success. That's amazing. Why don't we just fuck it all up for you? Because I'm just going to say, I don't understand how these people get their jobs. I, I just don't get it because... Me as someone who's never worked in the games industry, but has two brain cells to rub together, understands that 
you could have avoided all this and got 90, 95% of the people who play Helldivers 2 on PC to make a PSN account using a VPN, lying, whatever it is that they needed to do by simply adding a skin and saying, if you link your account to a PSN account, you get this free skin or you get a fucking X boost or whatever it's going to be. Some tiny thing that costs you almost nothing and you'd have got zero blowback at all. It would have basically had the same outcome. You would have gotten all the people to make a PSN account. There would have been no issue on social media. People wouldn't be review bombing your game, just giving people like a skin that took an artist a couple hours to make. It's fucking crazy that these Sony uh, executives are so stupid about things that they're probably getting six figures a year to just fuck up this game. This game is built so much goodwill. And the crazy thing is, right, one of the hardest things in the world to do, no matter what your product is, whether you're a YouTuber, whether you're making a game, whether you're making art, whatever it's going to be, is creating a, a community that is legitimately engaged with your product. Helldivers 2 is like a, a, a social cultural phenomenon when it's came out. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's, you know, making the memes. Everyone's uh, posting the videos that they've made. Everyone's saying the things, the democracy, massive raging debates about about movies from years gone by that obviously it's drawn massive inspiration from. People love this game and it basically means that any uh, content they put out, anything that's buyable, uh, any sequels that they make would have had all the goodwill in the world. You've got a literal golden goose here and you've decided to fuck it all up because you're so stupid you don't understand taking something away from people even if it was in you know some small print that would have been a requirement but never was is just it's so ridiculously stupid. So we have an amazing take here because I did save some of the the takes from people that I just completely disagree with and just missed the point. You all spend night and day setting up a PC, downloading mods, tweaking settings for hours but you all can't set up a PSN account. Not the problem. Never has been the problem. Um, there is legitimate concerns about, do I want to link my shit to Sony? Because Sony have had like a million data breaches and get hacked almost as a as a yearly thing. Like, oh, we had a hack this year. No. Oh, don't worry, we will. That That's basically Sony. And people are going to say, and again, I've seen this on Twitter loads of times, people saying, oh, you're worried about Sony being hacked, but what about Valve? What about Steam being hacked? What about this company? What about that company? The whataboutism doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if every other company in the world has been hacked. What matters is Sony gets hacked a lot. And every time you um, increase the people involved, increase the companies involved that you're giving your stuff to, you're just increasing the chance that that happens. So if that's something you care about, adding on this other company when already this company could be hacked, when it's irrelevant and it doesn't do anything for you as a customer, obviously means that that's just going to be bad. You know, it's just it's just objectively very easy to look at that there is no positive to this for you as a customer, which is what always blows my mind about these consumer problems, about these issues that you as a user should never argue Sony's point because what does that benefit you? It, it does nothing good for you. It only does good for them, usually at the cost of you or people like you, maybe from a different place. So I never understand when people go to bat for the company. They'll go to bat for themselves. They're doing what they need to do for them. Why are you helping them? I just, I'll never understand as a customer why people will go to this length to just literally sword swallow corporate penis um, just, just because they like the product. Still like the product, that's fine. Still play the game, still buy the stuff, still like the product, but why defend things that just are objectively um negative I, I i don't get it i really don't obviously they see it as not being negative but obviously engaging with the facts is is all you've got to do to understand it is uh, pc gamers just love to whine not wrong uh, generally oh no grown men and women have to create a free account not the problem and link it not the problem oh sh the shock the horror petty me uh, i'd make you download a separate launcher on top you mostly do on pc games anyway so again if that would have been the requirement from the very beginning not a problem at least not for me. Some people, again, are still going to have the data uh, protection issue, but that's their choice at that point. But if you let people play a game for multiple months and then take that away from them, you are literally stealing a game from, from them if they choose not to. 
this is the response from the guy who obviously we went over a second ago and again direct no hate towards these people they have a very difficult job and obviously they did some things wrong and we can critique that but we don't have to go after them personally because that makes you the problem and you're never in the right if you do that uh, i let the negativity get under my skin and gave a few people an attitude that's on me i completely understand why people are upset at the required account linking i'm not thrilled about it either and my suggestion to people to change their reviews to negative was completely genuine good yeah this is correct there are good and bad ways to express discontent, true. And coming after the devs and moderators in here isn't the solution and won't get the decision changed. Absolutely true, by the way. Don't ever do this. It's You can ask them. You can share your displeasure. If you target individuals, you're just, you're just a fucking loser. You're changing nothing. You're just making yourself part of a wider problem. People are emotional and rightfully so. Many of them won't be able to play the game anymore. It sucks. Uh, I'm not trying to attack anyone for being displeased with the change. I'm just trying to protect my team from the backlash, so I jumped on the grenade. You didn't. You didn't jump on a grenade. You're not, you're not a hero. This is the part I obviously vehemently disagree with. You uh, stoked the flames by posting stuff you shouldn't have been posting, uh, and you didn't protect anyone. You basically added more uh, gasoline to the fire. Yeah, definitely not something you, you properly did, but I understand because I've seen it myself. I've done it myself. I've been involved in things like this myself. Uh, having so much hate and so many people going crazy about something you probably are going to spur the moment say something um and and you probably shouldn't have done but it is what it is it's human everyone moves on now this is one i completely disagree with again although a lot of people did uh hd2 team has done, been nothing short of amazing to the community true this likely isn't in their hands be fair to them don't throw a tantrum true don't change your review disagree don't request a refund after hundreds of hours disagree be reasonable and communicative so if somebody takes something away from you and the option is either uh, do this thing you don't want to do or lose access to your account get, get a refund why would you not get a refund you are owed that you bought the thing if you no longer have access to it you you should get it back just because you played a product for a long time doesn't mean if somebody comes and takes it away from you you shouldn't get your money back uh, in, in my opinion obviously it feels a bit bad if you played a bunch if you want to leave your money with a company that's fine but obviously if somebody's going to take your stuff away i'm not going to say don't get a refund and especially don't change your review i've been seeing a lot of people saying this like review bombing uh, isn't the way it absolutely is because these companies care about these metrics and obviously we'll see in a second why that really does matter and why people should have been changing their review because obviously a review is how do i feel about this product it doesn't necessarily always have to be the game it could also be the company because that does matter to people consumers do uh, at least some of them do care about how they're being treated and what a company is doing they'll make decisions based on whether or not is the game fun enough for me to stop caring about what the company is doing or accept it and obviously with sony doing this it's perfectly uh, valid to to change your review and say i don't agree with this product i wouldn't buy it because of this that's totally fine as a consumer obviously big companies care about their steam review they care about what their consumers are saying if it affects sales which a massively negative review will do as you can see here overwhelmingly ne negative mixed overall uh, and if you go to the graph you'll see when they change the if it'll show me 153,000 negative reviews since may 2nd that's a lot of displeasure being being shown. A lot of the front page is just negative reviews when you click it uh, for recent. So John Smedley comes in, fucking don't know why John Smedley decided to have his take on this. It's a bad one again. Uh, he says, man, this review bombing is getting out of control. It's not. So many people are playing Hell Divers 2 uh, and all you see are awesome happy articles and the occasional they mess decks up. But with the amount of joy this team is bringing players, they should think twice about using a review bomb as a method of expressing this level of displeasure. Tweet away protests, do interviews and bad videos if you don't like something. But review bomb bombs can affect the livelihood of genuinely awesome developers and change the trajectory of games in Helldivers 2 is most certainly an incredible game. User reviews are for this purpose. Again, I don't know why. I know why John Smedley is because he's obviously a developer. Um, so him saying, oh, you shouldn't do this because it impacts developers. Yeah, but it's also one of the only ways you can show your displeasure and obviously steam uh, have now started accepting refunds for the game regardless of playtime which will be based on the review it, it, with how many people are negatively reviewing the game and the change steam have made the decision to give people their money back so obviously this stuff has an impact will it impact the developers of hell divers 2 
Probably, uh, but that's not your problem. I I'm sorry to say, because it sucks because people might lose their jobs, but that isn't your problem. At the end of the day, nobody forced Arrowhead to sign a contract with Sony. Nobody forced them to work on this game. They obviously saw within the, the, uh, the actual legal framework that they would be under Sony, that Sony would be making these decisions. So if then Sony does something and it fucks with the game, that I'm sorry to say, but that is still their problem. They still made that decision. Uh, they're still ultimately responsible, even if Sony are the people that did this and not them. It sucks, but that's how business goes. If you get into bed with a fucking shitty company like Sony, then obviously if they fuck you over, you do still have a part to play in that. It sucks, but that's just the world of business. Deserto getting community noted, just as Deserto usually does. We're not going to force people to either break Sony TOS or not play the game, says Helldivers Community Manager. Walks back PlayStation account requirements. They, they didn't walk it back. They're just saying they'll find a solution. And the solution has been, they fucking stopped selling the game now on Steam in a shitload of countries. They basically pulled the game if you go into their... As you can see here from SteamDB... Uh, Helldivers 2 is no longer purchasable in 177 countries where PSN is no longer available, or not available, sorry. So basically, they were saying, oh, everyone can buy this game, everyone could buy the game, they bought it, and then, oh, you've got to make an account, oh, you can't? Well, nobody can buy it anymore, but if you still have it, you still will be required to make an account, which is obviously why it's good that, as we can see here, Steam have just started accepting refunds. Like, you, you just put in a refund. This pl person had played for 97 hours and, and got a refund. His message in the refund was, Sony has retroactively changed how the game works and forced legal agreements upon me. I do not accept your game is being refunded by Steam. So I don't know if this is across the board. If it is, this is probably the best way to send the message to Sony. Again, you are taking into your hands the idea that you, people at Arrowhead could lose jobs based on this. But as far as I'm aware, they're, a, they're an independent studio. So Sony's displeasure shouldn't have any impact on them other than financially. And hopefully with the game having sold so many units initially, they will have got a big enough cut that they can remain, um, they can remain solvent and not having to fire a bunch of people. With them being such a good company, I'd hope that they uh, develop other games that aren't under Sony to the point where they don't have these things happen to them because obviously they've handled uh, their portion of Helldivers 2 extremely well. Like I said, they built a game that now has a subculture essentially that people really like. Just one more I'll go over real quick. Um, another person just sword swallowing. Uh, Dear Helldivers 2 anti-PSN players. Uh, they're just, uh, I think framing it as like anti-PSN, I don't even think that's the case. This is anti getting fucked by a corporation, no lube, right? Uh, it's it's nothing to do with PCN. This could have been anything. I don't think if this was a Microsoft account, if this was... Because uh, I've seen people saying like, oh, it's because it's Sony. No, it's because they're just taking the game away from people. Uh, some people forever because they, they literally can't make an account without lying, which in Sony's TOS is against the rules and they ban you for that. Uh, so yeah, it's nothing to do with Sony at all. It's everything to do with the fact it's happened. Please delete the game from your library. Ask for a refund and move on with your life. True. Nobody gives a shit about your feelings. They obviously do, otherwise you wouldn't be posting this. Like, I, I don't understand this argument always of like, oh, I don't care, so nobody should care. Like, don't, don't engage with it then, brother. Like, uh, why are you telling people not to talk about it? They can talk about it just like you can. It's pretty easy. Thanks, thank everyone that wants to actually read important shit on X. You're in the wrong fucking place, mate. You think important things on X? This website's been utterly useless for months. And unfortunately, everyone's coming across your tweet as well, which I don't find particularly useful, to be honest. As someone who does care about, you know, consumer rights and things like that, I think that's pretty useless to say, oh, just accept it, you know, just, just get your money back, move on, don't say anything, because I don't like seeing it. <sighs> Fantastic. I've seen people saying, oh, you know, boycotts don't work, and, and look at how many people are playing Helldivers, and that shows you that it's just a bunch of people crying on Twitter. If people like the game... And this change doesn't come in until, you know, whatever date it comes in. Of course, people are going to play the game up until the point where they can't anymore. And then even then, they'll probably try and get a refund, which I think if you I think if you really care about this, you should probably just get a refund now. But I also don't begrudge people because, again, life's too short of playing the game and having fun with it, even if they decide later on not to do this if Sony doesn't walk it back. And it honestly doesn't look like Sony's going to, although obviously the, the CEO is essentially, is saying that obviously they're going to try and fix this and get Sony to fuck off, basically. 
So this is the CEO, I believe, and he's saying, is this the moment to tweet what you guys don't have phones? Obviously, that's a reference to Blizzard's uh, good old snaffer with the fucking, when people got upset about Dabble, was it Dabble or Mortal? It's been so long. We are talking solutions with PlayStation, especially for non-PSN countries. Your voice has been heard and I'm doing everything I can to speak for the community, but I don't have the final say. Very sad, but there we go. Somebody does say, why are you acting all blameless? Like you should have known for probably years that PC, PSN would be a requirement. And I bet it was your call that it would not be enforced in the beginning to help with server load. And to be fair to this guy, he does respond and he says, I do have a part to play. I'm not blameless in all this. It was my decision to disable account linking at launch so that players could play the game. Perfectly reasonable, right? But then this is my issue because a lot of people again have been saying it was said it would be a requirement. But again, if it's not enforced, it's not a requirement, is it? You don't then come in later and say, oh, but you always knew when you literally clicked past the screen and then never thought about it again. But he does say, I did not ensure players were aware of the requirement and we didn't talk about it enough, which is, uh, this is just super obvious. I, uh, even if even the guy who's fucking responsible for it and usually CEOs be lying, they just straight be lying. Then obviously, if you're going to bat for them saying, oh, you know, you were told about it. You, even this guy disagrees with you and he has every impetus to fucking disagree. Uh, we knew for six months before launch that it would be mandatory for online PS titles. So they should have been communicating it in-game way more and then this would have been way less of an issue. But again, give people a skin or a fucking boost or something or, you know, a little bit of cash shop currency and they'd have all done it without even having to enforce it. And obviously the fact that they're saying it's because of security is just utter bullshit. Uh, it's not due to security. And in fact, it's less security. It's worse security for all your users because again, Sony is a piece of shit that gets hacked constantly. Um, wait, if you knew about it for six months, then why sell it in non-PSN countries? We do not handle selling the game. This is just, this is how it works. They're, they're the developer, they're not the publisher. The publisher handles it. It's through Steam. Nothing to do with them. Again, I don't know why PSN's not in so many countries. I have no fucking idea, but obviously that's like a legal thing with Sony uh, because operating in different countries, you do need to follow some kind of requirements in those countries. You do need to have offices in, present in some of those places. They've decided not to. So yeah, it's just a big old mess, but there we go. I think we've rambled on long enough about this one. Uh, again, it's a real shame because Helldivers 2, I'm sure it's going to continue to be a successful game. Hopefully Sony are capable of, of being slightly less stupid and just saying oh yeah it's just optional like it was going to be in the first place based on the tos and just taking the w of making loads of money and having a fucking literal golden goose uh, before they end up ruining the reputation of a developer and a great game that could have gone on to sell multiple copies uh, of sequels and and really just cemented their places being one of the best co-op live service games out there but who knows what they'll do. Uh, they're not particularly smart, obviously, by doing this in the first place. But uh, money speaks. So get your refunds and hopefully that makes them do what they're going to do. Enjoy the game if you're going to continue enjoying the game. Stop licking corporate boots when it does literally nothing to help you in, in your life as a customer. And you'll probably get better products in the future and you'll get fucked over less. Because eventually someone's going to do something that you care about. And hopefully there's people that are out there that will get refunds and boycott things and, and voice their displeasure with you. Um, so that you get the thing that you want and, and don't get fucked over by the companies because eventually it happens to everyone unless you're actually brain dead. Uh, but there we go. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, go buy Game of Subs. You can buy things like Anime Girl Thigh. Uh, the link in the video description. Put it in a shaker cup, shake it, drink it, all good. And uh, you'll get a discount if you use that link. I'll get a kickback. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.